Great morning, holy brothers! Today we are continuing on our pathway to peace. In the Garden of Peace. Today's lesson is called Fouling Fruits. <laughs> Here we go. Just a little addendum to yesterday's class. We were talking all about Avodah Zarah. We called it strange worship. Because what in the world are you doing when there's a tree that has unlimited goodness and there's the branches that contain some of that? You break off a branch and then you're, you're, you're holding that and serving that to try to get something from it? What are you, why are you not looking at the source where you can get so much more exponential blessings from? you got to be crazy and silly to limit yourself to what you can do. It's so strange. Go to the source. Stop bowing down to a little piece of wood, a little geshka, a little idol, a little man made out of clay with a big belly, Buddha, whatever it might be, you know? Go back and see the ultimate creator of everything. So that's why. But there's even more to it that I didn't get to mention yesterday that is so critically important and crucial to understand. When a person looks at an idol or seeks out a god, it's usually because they're looking for something in their life that they're missing, that they're lacking, that they want fulfilled to fill that void, that hole that they have gaping in their soul or in their heart. So let's say it's money. So they look for a god, they look for an outlet that can bring them money. Or let's say it's health. They're going to look for some concoction, some potion, some remedy, whatever it might be, that they're going to, they're going to serve if this is the thing, it's going to get them their answer. So the strangeness of it, the ultimate root of what we're talking about, goes back to not that the fact that they're just serving a branch of the tree, of the root of the trunk, but who are they really serving? Not the idol, but who? Who are they serving? Themselves! Themselves! Bingo! Right on the money. That is the key. Stop for a moment. They're not serving a God, a, a partial God, a false deity. They're self-serving. They're serving themselves. That's why it's crazy. It's strange worship because they're not worshiping something else. They're worshiping themselves. They're so selfish. They're so arrogant. They're so full of everything that they only want what can bring them the answer. They don't want to serve a God. They don't want to have to do commandments. They don't want to have to do mitzvahs. They just want something that's going to bring them the answer. Bring them the quick fix that everybody runs to for this generation. They don't want to diet. They don't want to exercise. Just give me a pill. I, I can take a pill and lose weight. Let me do everything bad that I want. I want to eat. I want to, I want to sit on the couch. I want to do everything. I, 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 I. For me, I'm serving myself and anything else in the world that can serve me, that is what I want. It's selfish, because it's not serving something else. It's strange, because they're just serving themselves. That's what it's all about. That's why it's arrogant, because it's all for me. You get it? We were just talking about what? Arrogance and anger. The Rambam talks about there's two things. Everything in life has to be a middle ground. You can't go too far to the right, too far to the left. You can't veer off the straight and narrow path. Always down the middle. And as you said before, Ramam, two big flags you cannot have a middle ground for. When it comes to arrogance and it comes to anger, there is no middle. Always to the right. 100% goodness, greatness. You can never have a little bit of anger. You can never have a little bit of arrogance because it's all bad. There's no goodness to it at all. You never want to get angry. If a kid does something and you want them to learn a lesson, you put on a facade. You play a role. You pretend to show a kid that they're angry just so they get the message for themselves that they shouldn't be doing it. But if deep down inside you have a fire burning, that's going to burn you up. It's going to eat you from the inside out. Do not have the anger. Play it. Play a role. Put on an act. Be that actor. But don't ever feel it inside. That's true. He says, like, even wisdom departs from people with anger. And I've seen, I've seen people get angry. And, you know, they're not... You know, like Jew, like religious, right? But even you know, like when you see their anger, like really, like r anger problems, crazy. You know, even their common sense goes needless to say out the window. Wisdom, it's like what, what what's it's going gone on right now. So anyway, so the, the root of what the Rambam is saying to bring it all home for full circle 
is that these people who are having a little bit of arrogance, or a ton of arrogance, people are so full of themselves, you know? People will come in, Hey, morning, Ali, brother! Oh, morning, Ali, brother! Oh, they can be... We'll do a long one at the end. They can be, yeah, they can be arrogant, right? Somebody who is anger, they're running around <laughs> all day. What's the root of everything? We get down to the boil it down. It's selfishness. It's this avodah zara. They're serving themselves. How can you be arrogant? Yeah, move over a little bit so everybody can see you. How can you be arrogant? There's other people in the world. What are you doing? Who do you think you are? Or anger. You're going to get angry? What do you mean? How can you get angry when something that happens unless you feel the whole world revolves around you? There's that sense of selfishness. How could you not feel the whole world revolves around you? Uh, no, 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 that is a joke. <laughs> God didn't create you when you were born in a state of selflessness. You are, I am. By definition. You especially are, by nature, yeah, by who's selfish. Nature? Who's nature? By Spir- God's giving nature selfish. Spiritual nature or physical nature? Physical. Right. Okay, so we'll pause there. He's right. So the physical nature, again, selfishness will lead to arrogance. Because who do you think you are? Because I'm selfish. But that's what? natural. Good. Yeah. Natural physically. And what is the selfishness going to lead to? Anger. Because if things don't go my way, run! I'm angry. Why am I angry? Who the heck says it should go your way in the first place? What are you, so selfish that everything needs to be according to what you say, according to what you do? That is where it all comes from. Boil it down to the basics. Stop serving yourself. Stop being strange. Get rid of those idols. And stop being strange worship of yourself. Good. How can you stop being something you are, though? Amazing. This is how we're teaching yourself not to be through all these methods, methodologies, and lessons that we're going to be learning. Okay, let's move on and learn how. According to what our sages have taught regarding somebody who's an ingrate, (laughs) namely somebody who does not acknowledge the kindness of anyone. Forget God. Forget your wife. Of your friend who's here in the morning. He wakes up extra early to make sure that he's here so I have somebody to learn with. Otherwise, I'm talking to the walls. Isn't it much better to have somebody smiling back at you, sitting opposite you, that you can share, that you can love, that you can give to? Especially when he's wearing his Thank you for being here. <laughs> Thank you for making the extra effort to help me. So I can be happy too. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. And I appreciate you listening and watching too. We can understand the above mentioned the Gemara in another way. When you stretch out a stick, right? With a big stake on the end of it to a dog. We talked about before the dog that is mad at the stick, right? You take a stick, whack dog. The first thing the dog does, turn around. What is he biting? What is he biting? What is he biting? What are you doing? What are you doing? This? Who's holding the stick? Me or the stick? The stick's not holding me. I'm holding the stick. If the dog had common sense, it would bite my arm instead of the stick. Okay? Now, I'm going to go back the other way now. He's just angry. He's not trying to bite you. But, if he's, but what is he angry at? The dog doesn't have the common sense to think. He does right? not, that's what I'm saying. He's not trying to get right. you back. Right. And people aren't... He's something that said it. So you think, we should use a little more common sense than a dog, you know? So are you? Why? Same same thing with the person. No. <laughs> Who are you angry at, right? Saying, Who not, are you angry at? I'm not angry that you hit me. I'm just angry because my because you're hit. My because you're hit. My kingship is oh. not being recognized. Yeah, that's a that's a much higher level than most people are at. When somebody gets hit, usually they turn around and want to punch the other guy back in the face. Yes or no? Not you, because you're holy, but other people. <laughs> so anyway, let's go the other way now. When you have that stick that you normally hit a dog with, but now you put a big juicy steak dripping hot right on the end of it with A1 sauce. So? You hit it with a steak? You're going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> he sees the steak. He sees the steak, it's, right? It's learning not to answer back, basically. <laughs> of course. But so again, the dog with the stick of the steak, right? What is the dog seeing when you put that in front of him? What does he see? Food. He sees food! He sees a drip. Ah, he can't wait to take a bite out of it or rip it into pieces. Shred it all up. Is he going to notice the person with the stick it's holding that stake. He is so focused on one thing. It's like a baby. Babies get so focused when they want to do something, when they try to walk, when they try to eat, whatever they want to try to do. They're, they're, that's why it's so amazing. You can turn on it. You can put it on. No, it's, not really. it's so fascinating to watch a baby or a young child because when they do something, 
they're all in. They're all, they don't get distracted by their phones, by 20,000 other, when, they, when they're in it, they all, oh, what's going on? They're so focused, hyper-focused on what they're, it's like somebody on ADD or Adderall, whatever it might be. The babies, you look at a baby, that's why people love to watch babies, because they're so focused on what they're doing. It's amazing to see that kind, right? So the dog is so focused on that stick. He doesn't see the stick, doesn't see the person. He sits it, doesn't notice anything else. In that same way, men will be so focused on and absorbed in their desires that they're not going to notice who or what's providing them with their needs. You get that mint ice cream, you're going for it. You want to finish the whole tub. The next morning, you're going to wake up, you're, you're, you're pooping pee, man. You're pooping your pee. It's, it's pouring out of you. Women do that a lot. <laughs> They have tubs of ice cream when they feel depressed. I thought you were going to say they pee. They poop their pee. Okay. Anyway, yeah. So what's the way to... They get lost in it. So the question really is, and I'll let you continue. I know you want to... The way to recognize and express for real the fact that I run the world and I'm in charge of the entire world, including this shul. I'm in He's God or I'm in you. I am the, I am the king. <laughs> I am the king of everyone. And so everybody that... That they should be under my rule when I feel like that, and I want the world, including my wife and everyone, to listen to me and my kingliness. And yeah. I'm supposed to act and make pretend like I'm selfless and I am humble and I want the world whatever you want, God, whatever you want, whatever. Not that, not whatever I want, whatever I want. So, so it's a contradiction. 100 percent of what of your mind? of your soul and your body right. <laughs> and your, your animal desire. Is overrunning you right now. And you can't lie to yourself and say, oh. I'm Don't lie. Don't lie, but, lie, but recognize. Whatever you want. Recognize the realness. So again, the dog's not going to see that stick. You'll be so absorbed in fulfilling the lusts. People have no time to think, where's the master of the universe? What is providing them anything for them? They get lost in their animalness. Ungratefulness to one's wife is a repetition of? Ungratefulness to God. What sin are we repeating? Selfishness. What sin are we repeating now? Who's sin? Oh, Adam. Let's go, baby. Back to Isha, basics. The woman that you gave back to voracious. Back to the beginning, basics. But Here we go. Hashem questioned him. him. What did God say to Adam? Hey, buddy, did you uh, happen to eat from that tree I told you about? Whoa! Sit down for Sean Hey, yo, listen up. Sit down for Sean Bison. I'm going to ask you a question. Were you here on time for Shachris yesterday? Does no. God know if you were here? Does God know if you were here? <laughs> does God know, I said. Does God know for sure? Why does God open his statement to Adam? Hey, buddy, did you happen to eat from that tree? Does God know? Give you a chance. Oh, his Give brother. you a chance to admit it. Did you do it? He's asking Adam. Did you happen to eat from that tree? Oh, oh. Does, does God know? Of course God knows! But as our holy static of David Tzvi, Admoni, is saying in the class, what is God giving him? Chance. Opportunity to what? Chance. God always gives us the graciousness to have an opportunity to admit mistake to give to Shuba. So Adam opens his mouth, and like our holy friend here, what does he say? This guy wants to say, come on. Whose fault is that? Papa. That stinking, smelly, unbelievable, a great woman. That girl that you gave me. She told me to do it. She told me to eat. What are you kidding me? Why are you asking me? Go ask her. She fed me. It's her fault. This girl that you gave me, look what trouble you brought me. Now I'm, in, I'm, I'm, I'm under the whipping belt because of her mistake, her flaw. She told me to eat. I ate it. I only listened to her. Don't you want me to listen to her? Didn't you create me to listen to her? Look, she told me to do it. She and did, I did it. She did tell me to eat. She did? Hello? Why are you asking me, Shem? Go bother her. Rashi states here that Adam was denying Rashi here. Not like crazy McCubble. Rashi on the Torah. The first line of interpretation after Uncle Esther, Arshul, English, whatever you want. Rashi's here to explain everything. Simple. Rashi says, Adam was denying God's kindness to him. What? God gave him a wife to help him. 
God gave him a wife in order to make him feel whole, to have purpose in this world, to be fulfilled. What? I thought the phone fell. Oh, good, Baruch So, <laughs> as soon as he stumbled, what did Adam do? Adam blames his wife and blames Hashem! Are you kidding me? You're blaming God now! You, God, are guilty! You gave me her! It's your fault that she's in my life! Hello? What the heck is going on here? Not only does he not have made mistakes, not only is he blaming the one thing that he asked for in the first place to have his mate, he's blaming God, Hashem, the creator of the universe, who just gave him what? Mate. He made the world for him! Forget the mate! The whole creation was done for the purpose of man. Are you an idiot? Are you such an ingrate? Do you realize what was just made for you? Well, he didn't the know. birds, the trees, the plants, the skies, the everything around you, you stupid fool. You idiot, you ingrate. Now you're going to blame God? For everything? Yeah, it's the true. Right wife before he, he gave him the wife, he, it said that he was looking for somebody for himself. He He's looking for that. it! He said hello! He saw his sorrow and that gave him what uh, he wanted. Dude, what is going on? That's what happens to everybody. They're depressed and lonely until they get married. Then when they get married, they're like, oh God. <laughs> oh God! Oh God! They say, I'm like, Look oh you. God, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> the Bala to him writes they're like, thank you for that so Adam you. repaid good with bad. With bad. Evil. Guys, wake up. Understand what is being here for you, what God is blessing you with. You want a wife, she can be your helper or she can be your herder. Right? Your opposition or your helper. What's going to be? It's all based on you. Look for the good. Be full of gratitude. And the kind of blessings you will get, we will continue with next time. Have an awesome day, Shishli. Amazing rest of your day. Good morning, Great. holy brother. Uh, Tomorrow morning, God shall be here at 6.40, 6.55. 25 a.m. 25 a.m.